Hello, welcome in. Let's talk about art block and burnout. So I have some work going on in my apartment right now. So I thought, hey, let's just go and take this out into the forest. It's a beautiful autumn day. Autumn is the best season. The air is so like crisp and refreshing. Sorry if the sound is not as good as usual. Okay, let's get into this. We have the question, how do you deal with art block? Have there been periods where you haven't been able to draw for weeks or even months? And this is a really good question. I think that as artists, most artists, we like struggle with this and not just artists, but I think that people in general, you know, we, we struggle with burnout. <laughs> um, so this is going to kind of overlap a little bit between art block and burnout because I kind of want to touch on both topics. After university, I had a period where I was so burnt out that I basically didn't draw at all for about two years. That was a combination of me having burnout and also having somewhat given up on drawing at the time. Um, what really shook me out of it was traveling to Italy and being inspired by a bunch of artwork there. I wasn't traveling to fix my art block or my burnout, but that is just kind of something that happened and it was a big turning point for my art career. But while that's a really important story and point in my art journey, I don't think it's exactly helpful for what I face now or what you might face if you are in the middle of like an art blog. So for years, I've been pretty consistent about churning out artwork, um, but there have definitely been periods of time where I feel especially burnt out or blocked. Sometimes that manifests as me sitting in front of my tablet wanting to draw, but like nothing's coming out. And then other times, it will be so bad that it manifests as me being just like completely resistant, unwilling, almost even disgusted with the idea of sitting down in front of a computer to draw and work on stuff. Now, I'm pretty good at like bullying or tricking myself to get back to work, especially if there's a deadline. A little later in the video, I will talk more about when these like tricks don't work but first let's go through these tricks if you need like a quick fix and maybe it will give you some ideas again this is just like my experience what I do it may or may not work for everybody or you or I don't know but worth worth giving a try and you know spreading the knowledge so here we go if I am struggling to sit down and draw or work on something first I make sure I drink a big glass of water full glass you guys not just a little baby one, a full glass of water, one go. And sometimes I will also either splash my face with cold water or take a rag and soak my face with cold water. Um, <laughs> this is just a trick that helps me feel more refreshed and energized. And sometimes it can help me feel more ready to like get to work or draw or whatever I need to do. Next, I often will tell myself out loud, okay, Krissa, we're gonna work on X right now or X today. Saying it out loud, I feel it just has a little more impact and punch rather than saying it in your head. You can, of course, try saying it in your head, but I, I just feel that saying it out loud, saying, hey, Krissa, we're going to work on this today, um, it has a lot more impact. And then I can be like, okay, yes, <laughs> we're going to work on this today. If I don't have any like specific goal or thing or project that I'm working on, sometimes I will also say, okay, Krissa, just doodle some, just doodle something or let's work on this piece for just a little. It can be for only five minutes if you want. Spoiler alert, usually when I sit down to draw something for five minutes, it like is almost, ne it's almost never just five minutes. The, the trick is getting started. It will usually go on for uh, quite a bit longer than that once I can get going. It will get me to sit down at my tablet and just start because sometimes that's the biggest challenge is just starting. The next thing that is sometimes helpful is to spend a little bit of time browsing through a website like Pinterest to gather reference or inspiration. Now you have to be really careful with this step because it's super easy to just get sucked into gathering reference for hours and hours. I think that, you know, collecting things like Pinterest, it gives you a little bit of that quick dopamine hit and so you just keep doing it sort of like shopping. So you have to be careful, maybe time yourself like, okay, for 10 minutes, we're going to browse. Uh, for inspiration and reference rather than just continuing to browse if the timer goes off you, you gotta like pick a couple things and just like use those 
uh, don't keep don't keep browsing you have to actually start drawing and when I finally get myself to sit down and start something that I like to do is I like to turn on loud music no podcasts no YouTube videos don't get me wrong I love listening to podcasts and videos and audiobooks and streams while I work. It's like one of my favorite things to do. Sometimes they can be really motivational, but if I'm having a hard time holding my attention and motivation on art and drawing, sometimes I really need that upbeat music so that I can get into the flow with the beat while I am keeping most of my attention on the art and not getting distracted by like a story or something. So those were some of my quick tips that, you know, will sometimes help, but sometimes like the burnout and the art block, it really is just too much. You can't trick yourself into getting back to work because that does happen sometimes. Ugh. Hair. <laughs> The past couple months were sort of that way for me. Over the summer, I could tell that a lot of my art was feeling really forced. And I think that when you are feeling forced to uh, do art, it kind of shows in the final product. Like, not that everyone knows what's going on, but I think that a lot of people can detect that something is maybe a little bit off in the final artwork. Partway through August, I was really hit by there's no way I can do things normally this time. For you guys who have been following my work for a while, or if you come to my streams, you probably already know I'm really bad at taking full breaks. So I tried to compromise with myself. And so I tried to create space to at least slow down a little and reduce the pressure. I paused billing in September on Patreon, and that's why August patrons got September access for free as you know, you patrons probably already know and already saw these updates. I was still doing a little bit of drawing, but setting a pause really helped take the pressure off of myself enough to feel better about taking a little bit more time and having a little bit more freedom to to do things and rest a little bit. If I have times where I feel like I just cannot draw, there's no way to get myself to do it, I would try and be gentle with myself and say things like, it's okay, we don't have to do this right now. And then I would ask myself, what do you want to do? And a lot of the time, the answer to that question was nothing. Which is weird for me because I feel like I'm, my brain is like, pretty act, like very active. I'm always wanting to be doing something or distracting myself with something. Sometimes when I'm feeling really low or really burnt out, like there's nothing that comes to my head that I want to do. And so instead of trying to distract myself with like mindless scrolling on social media or watching videos or playing a video game, um, I would go and either just sit or lay down and do nothing. I know it sounds a little bit weird in this day and age of constant distractions, but I think that just sitting or laying with no distractions, nothing else going on is kind of rejuvenating for the mind and for creativity. Something else that I do a lot that I think is really helpful for rejuvenating my creativity is reading. I read a lot of fantasy books. I was burnt out and like there was nothing else I wanted to do. So basically my months were when I, cause I still did do a little bit of drawing and stuff, but when I was resting or relaxing, basically what I was doing was I was A, doing nothing. <laughs> I was sitting or laying down and just like staring at the ceiling um, or sometimes coming out in nature and just sitting is actually very rejuvenating as well. The important thing is to not have like distractions. And then the other thing I was doing was just reading um, because it was really the only thing that sounded uh, relaxing and rejuvenating to me. But when you are in this really like hardcore burnout or art block, uh, I actually do not recommend looking at a bunch of art and inspiration. There's definitely a time and a place to look up visual inspiration. I love browsing Pinterest, but I find that when I am art blocked or burnt out, it is not because I lack visual inspiration and visual stimulation. Like, we have so much of that. It's not because I'm lacking that. It's actually the opposite problem. I'm being overloaded with too much visual stimulation 
almost too much pictures, too much art, too much videos. It's really cool that on the internet we just have infinite scrolling and artwork and all of this amazing inspiration that we can look at, but seeing so much can be really overwhelming. And then sometimes when we start to feel overstimulated and overwhelmed by all of that, sometimes that critical inner voice can start to creep in as well, which makes, you know, art block and burnout even worse when you start beating yourself up for it. I know when I'm really burnt out or really art blocked, it's often better to just close down any visual stimulation. So try and spend some time without it to first rejuvenate the mind and the imagination. There's a reason that shower thoughts can be so brilliant. There aren't distractions in the shower. It's just you, your mind, and relaxing running water. It opens the door for your mind to explore what it wants to without the outside influence of your phone or the computer or whatever. And something else that's really good to recognize is that everything moves in like waves and cycles, including our energy and creativity. When you're in an art block and you're not able to draw or produce anything, I know that it can feel extremely unproductive, but it could be that you are in a slower and more restful phase of your energy levels. There could be a process going on under the surface that you are not aware of. And if you embrace this phase and be kind to yourself, let yourself rest and recover for a while, you may be surprised at how motivated and inspired you are when you come out on the other side. Um, I feel that this has happened to me recently, right now even. <laughs> you know, I, I took that slower time in August and September to slow down and have a little bit more restful times and you know it was hard it was hard to accept it and um, there were a lot of times where i felt really low but now that we're into october i actually do feel a lot more rejuvenated and optimistic and creative and i feel excited to create which you know in the dark phases i i was really worried like i'm never gonna come out of this this is forever we're forever in the darkness i'm never gonna be able to draw well again you know all of these like catastrophizing thoughts can come up but um when that happens sometimes you have to say hold on hold on now krissa you know it's okay to take some time to rest take a deep breath go lay down on the forest floor for an hour, <laughs> do something, uh, turn off the phone, don't scroll social media, just like be, which I have a really hard time being, so I know easier said than done. Hey, actually, you know, being in the forest for this video is very fitting now that I think about it. Oh, we can talk a little bit about, okay, you've been maybe in this restful phase or this burnt out phase where maybe you haven't drawn for weeks or months. I'll be honest, I haven't completely experienced this in a long time. My advice is start small, a sketch, a doodle. Doodle something that was in your comfort zone that you love. Oh, for example, if I've been feeling blocked for a while, we're just gonna draw a cute cat right now. That's that's, that's a success. You're just gonna draw a cute cat right now. Sitting down, doodling something simple, easy, just to get things flowing. I will feel more motivated to tackle the next project. Maybe the next project's a little bit bigger, maybe it's not. But the point is that I started. Something that I think can really get us stuck in art block is overly high expectations for ourselves or just any expectations in general. So, uh, that is why I think when coming out of art block or at least trying to come out of it after, you know, resting, I think it's important to try and do your best to let go of those expectations. And that's why I suggest starting with drawing something. Sorry, there is a squirrel jumping from tree to tree that I'm <laughs> watching in the background. Okay, sorry. Where, did, where was I? Throw your expectations out the window. I know. Again, easier said than done. Also, lastly, I wanted to mention that sometimes art block is not just art block. Uh, sometimes there can be underlying emotional or mental health things going on 
um, under the surface. I know that I have definitely experienced this. Do some self-reflection or talk to somebody, maybe a trusted friend or family, or if you are able to get someone professional to talk to, uh, I think that that is definitely worth it. You can even talk to a professional about how you're experiencing this creative block if you want. And hopefully you can also dig into maybe what could be going on under the surface. We're not gonna dive into that too much in this video, but it is worth being aware of that there could be something else going on, even physically. Like, make sure you are hydrated, make sure you are eating enough, make sure you are sleeping enough. Like, basic needs first, and then uh, you, you never know. This video is probably long enough. I hope the audio came out okay. I'm really happy that we were able to get this footage out here in the wilderness. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm not really used to just these like talking at the camera videos. Hopefully something useful was in there. Huge shout out to my patrons for supporting my art and my work and making videos like this possible. Um, the questions that I'm answering are actually from posts on Patreon where <laughs> they can ask questions. So I'm gonna be trying to slowly tackle all of those questions one by one I guess because I am too long-winded to tackle multiple in one video. You guys on Patreon if you want to drop more questions in that post I will include the link to that post in the Patreon post on this video. Thanks for watching you guys and have a wonderful rest of your week, weekend, whatever it is. Happy drawing! Bye! Oh my butt's all soggy now! <laughs>